Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to Lamplight City. And in the last episode, we had just finished our conversation with uh, Margaret Andrews, the aspiring crazy cat lady. And now it's time to return to the Spectre Society and see what information they have on spontaneous combustion. Didn't think we'd be coming back here. Welcome back, Mr. Fordham. Oh, not even a preamble or anything. Okay. Let's have a chat with Angela. Could I ask you about some things, Miss Maxwell? Certainly, darling. Are you familiar with a woman named Desiree Lathan? Yes, she came to see me just last week. She told me she was doing research for an article she was writing for Brentwell Magazine. What sort of research? She asked me a few questions and looked at my books. That was all. She wasn't here for very long. And what was she researching? Something about spontaneous human combustion, I believe. Did you know that Desiree Lathan is dead? What? My god, no! I didn't! What happened to her? She was found burned to death in her bed. How awful! Do you have any idea how this may have happened? There are a number of possibilities. But if she was in the middle of researching spontaneous human combustion, and then to have this happen, it can't be a coincidence. Are you suggesting she herself was a victim of spontaneous combustion? One need only compare the circumstances of her death with the facts, darling. She can't be serious, can she? I think she's very serious. What can you tell me about spontaneous human combustion? I'm not overly familiar with the subject, but I do have a book about it on the shelf back there. You are welcome to look at it if it will help. I may, but I'd like to know what your understanding of it is. Well, I believe it is when the human body inexplicably catches fire and burns. It usually occurs among elderly women who drink to excess and very little fire damage is caused around the body. That's really all I know, darling. It's not a very agreeable subject for study now, is it? Thank you for the information. It was very enlightening. It was my pleasure, darling. The thing about it is, in the case of Lathan, there was some damage. So let's see what we got here. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Mysteries of Spontaneous Combustion. And we've already read this, so... This all sounds strangely familiar, but spontaneous human combustion can't be real. Can it? Then again, sometimes the simplest explanation is the correct one. Victims are chronic alcoholics. Check. Usually elderly females. Check. The hands and feet usually fall off, which is interesting considering how we found the body. The fires caused very little damage to things around the body, but it did cause all of that um, damage to the roof. A residue of greasy and fetid ashes is left behind. Hmm. Let's go ahead and check the guest book. There's quite a few members in this group. Oh, it's not even going to let us check on that. Okay. I don't think there's anything she can help with right now. Fair enough. I'll be going now. May the spirits guide you to that which you seek. Now where to... Report to Upton and declare Desiree Lathan's death the result of spontaneous human combustion. Yeah, no, I don't think so. We need to find out what happened to Tobias the cat. I guess that requires us heading back to the bank. So let's do that first. What happened to the kitty, Mr. Andrews? Mr. Andrews? Yes? Is there anything you can tell me about your wife's old cat, Tobias? Oh God, there's a name I was hoping never to hear again. She loved that cat. I'm sure she would have married it instead of me if she could. Mangy little bastard was always leaving a mess and knocking things over, but he was Peggy's little angel. Then one day I'd had enough, so I let him outside and... Yes? The stupid thing managed to get itself killed. Then things got ugly. How so? Peggy got a bit carried away, and, well, let's just say I never imagined a cat could earn someone a criminal record. The plot thickens. Or perhaps sickens. Thanks for your time, Mr. Andrews. Okay, did not expect that. 
We haven't got anything else to ask him about right now. Guess we'll head back to uh, Margaret and see what's going on here. Nothing more to ask her about right now. Leave her to her... Uh, friends. Oh, we could go back to the police station and ask about the criminal record then. I would imagine. Okay. Find a suitable container to transport the ashes. Speak with attorney Jonas Usher. Now, what did we need to do to have a chat? Oh, yeah, the proof. Begging your pardon, sir. Yes. I appreciate it. Enjoy. Before we do that, let's travel over... Let's back to the scene of the crime. Provided we can actually head in here. Oh. Man, we did some good work. Nothing new to ask him about right now. I'm afraid I need to have another look inside Miss Lathan's room, Officer Kane. All right, but please be quick about it. Okay. So, waste bin. Miss Lathan's half-written article about igniting the fires within. Pity we'll never be able to know how it ends. Doesn't look as though this fire... Just wanted to double-check things. You know how it is, guys. Nothing else of interest in there. Hands and feet fell off, which I guess... Or hands and... Well, that's the, those are the legs, necessarily. And we are missing a hand. Miles, do you really want to go carrying around those stinking ashes in your pocket? It'll... T mm. And the skull. I don't think Desiree will. Bill. What? Alas, come to think. This one's clean. Well, aside from the fact that the rest of the leg is burned off. Okay. Just a pile of ashes. They can't tell us much more than we already know. Nothing else of interest in there. All right. So there's nothing. Nothing more in here. We're gonna have to find some stuff judging by these books let's just hope we're tape kind of wanting to see if there's anything else that may suddenly present itself an invitation to the Gascone Grand Am's ball it seems you have to hand it all right Well, let's uh, follow the clues that we are that we know. Got a moment, Upton? Yes, but let's make this quick. I need some information on one Margaret Andrews. Apparently, she has a criminal record. Margaret Andrews, eh? Give me a moment to look her up in the archives. Yes, here we are. Margaret Andrews was brought in for questioning five years ago in connection with a fire at a theater in Worcester. Oh? Yes. Nothing came of it, but she was briefly a suspect. Oh, there's more. She also had a prior conviction for... arson. You don't say. The file says she set fire to a cab after the driver ran over her cat. She served six months in prison for that. This was back in... 1835. Fascinating. Wow. Thank you for your help, Upton. This has been extremely valuable. So, Margaret Andrews has a jealous streak and a penchant for setting things on fire. Seems a likely culprit to me. Suspect added. Okay. That's it for now. Better get back to it, then. Already with another suspect. Let's go ahead and confront Margaret about her criminal record. Nothing more to ask her about right now. Oop, oh, never mind. Rat. So we're out on the police station, out on the Andrews residence, out on the Spectre Society. Um, we've got Brentwell Magazine and the Gascone Supper Club. And we're done with the bank currently.
Nobody's bothered clearing this table yet, it seems. Oh, really? We take the tankard for the ashes? Well, if no one's cleaned up, you might as well do them the favor. Okay, well, that'll work then. Miss Robineau? Oh, it's you again. Have you come to ask me more questions? Yes, if you wouldn't mind. No, no. Be my guest. Complimenter. No. Let's not do that right now. Thanks for your time. Thanks. I don't know where exactly that's going to go, but I don't think it's going to be anywhere good. All right, now I need to get back in there one more time. Sorry, officer. I'm afraid I need to have another... All right. Hopefully we don't have to wash out the mug. Oh, Miles, really? You're going to carry the ashes around in a pewter mug? It's vital to the investigation that we find out exactly what happened to the body. If anyone can tell us for certain, it's Dr. Edwards. Fair enough. I suppose this isn't the most unpleasant thing you've carried around before. Remember that time we had to go looking for that murder victim's missing head? I'd really rather not, actually. There we are. Okay. I think we're in good shape now. Ugh. The smell from the bedroom is getting worse. I don't know how much longer I can stand it. Well, you just uh, stay at your post there, officer. Now, I believe the doctor is over at the police station. Dear Lord, what is that smell? Did you step in something out there, Fordham? Private investigation is a dirty job, Upton. You know that. Got a moment, Upton? Yes, but let's make this quick. Would it be possible for me to access the mortuary? The mortuary? What for? I'd like to consult with Dr. Edwards. All right, but be careful. Make sure you don't let Snelling see you back there. For sure. That's it for now. Better get back to it then. That's weird that we have two ways to end the case and we haven't even really checked the ashes. Oh, lovely. Uh, Dr. Edwards' lab was always a fascinating place to learn about death. A bit less so now that I'm quite the expert. Oh, did I miss cleaning up some bit of that last corpse? Oh, Fordham, what brings you down here? Hello, Edwards. I was wondering if I could pick your brain. Yes, yes, of course. There's one in a jar over there, and I may have another one around here somewhere. Did you that coroner humor never gets old, does it? Anyway, let me know what you want to discuss. This fellow's not going anywhere. I like him. And I like that we have uh, Bob here from the Dresden Files keeping watch. Well, at least he died with a smile on his face. Sort of. Abby Normal. Uh, looks rather fresh. There's a plaque at the base of the jar that says H. Putnam. Got the workbench. I'm pretty sure I saw Edwards weighing his lunch on this once. This once. I remember when Edwards used to keep his collection of preserved reproductive organs on this shelf. He must be getting soft in his old age. Or perhaps that's exactly what happened to his collection. Wow. Bill with the jokes. A fine example of well-developed deltoids, latissimus dorsi, and gluteus maximi. The brain is truly a fascinating organ. If only more people used it. Assorted lab equipment for setting things on fire or causing explosions. You know, the perfect way to pass the time. Agreed. Assorted lab equ I wonder if Edwards ever got around to fixing this typewriter. The letter E being out of alignment always made his reports a nightmare to read. It's important to keep your hands clean when dealing with dead bodies. After all, you never know where they've been. Until after the post-mortem exam, anyway. You've seen one dissected torso. You've seen them all. Sure is a lot of rubbish crammed inside our upper bodies, isn't there? For sure. This provides the room with just the right amount of heat. 
Unlike the incinerators in the crematorium. Talk about overkill. I feel sorry for the poor slob who has to clean that out. Seems to be empty for now. That's most definitely a good thing. I like the autopsy table. Holy crap. Edwards must have some very good friends in the department to have gotten this custom-made table. It does suit the room, though. Yeah. I'd say being hooked up to that machine was the worst experience of my life, except I was already dead at the time. Imagine a giant mosquito sucking out all your blood and then replacing it with formaldehyde. Not very pleasant. Nice pair of legs. Edwards keeps assorted bottles and specimens in there. Nothing too remarkable that I can see. Not a stitch of clothing on him. As if having your torso ripped open and poked around inside weren't bad enough. There truly is no dignity in death. All right, I think we've observed... Oh. That collection of stains, fluids, and other repugnant materials almost makes me homesick for the chum. I guess this place is as sanitary as they can make it. Let's have a chat with the good doctor. Pardon me, Edwards. Yes? Yes. Oh. I've got these human ashes from a crime scene. Straight to the point. I knew I liked you for a reason, Fordham. Who do they belong to? Desiree Lathan. She was a Gascon Grand Dame. Oh, of course. I heard about that case. She was found burned in her home, wasn't she? That's right. I meant to go over there later today. Well, then I suppose I've saved you the journey. Would you have a look at these? Does this mean you're officially on the case? Not as such. In fact, I'd appreciate it if you didn't mention I'd been here. Ah, a clandestine operation. Sneaking around under Snelling's nose. I don't have much of a choice. I'm pretty much persona non grata around here these days. Well, you're always welcome in my mortuary. Preferably while still breathing, of course. Anyway, I'll just take those ashes off your hands. I'm sure your social life will soon improve. Yes, I was making quite the impression. This is an interesting choice of container. It was either that or carry them around in my bare hands. Well, I'm a bit busy right now, but I should have something for you within the next couple of hours. But you do realize the information won't be exclusive to you. I'll have to pass it on to the detectives on the case. Naturally. That just gives me more of an incentive to work quickly. Yes, indeed. I found this piece of burned cloth at the crime scene. Could you take a look at it for me? This is from the Lathan case? It is, yes. What do you need me to look at exactly? It appears to have some oily residue on it. Interesting. I'm afraid I have my hands full right now, but you can feel free to use my workbench if you'd like. To do what, exactly? Surely they taught you something about basic chemical analysis when you worked here. Yes, well, I always let Bill handle the more technical aspects of our cases. A real pity I'm not around to help you anymore, isn't it? But I'll have a look and see if something comes back to me. Hopefully we don't blow ourselves up. Keeping busy down here, Edwards? Oh, you know me. I've always got my hands in someone. Edwards always did have a way with words. This postmortem was just a formality, really. The victim died of a gunshot wound to the head. Last week, though, we had a real kicker. An old man was brought in, and though he appeared quite dead, I was told that he'd been in a trance for over half a year. Apparently, he was hypnotized right at the point of death, and somehow managed to remain alive in a fashion. In any case, when I began performing the exam, his entire body decayed into a putrefied mess within minutes. It was fascinating. Uh, should you really be giving me these details, Edwards? Oh, hell, I don't mind telling you, Miles. It's not like you're going to go tell Snelling. Besides, you're the only one who's come to see me all week. Dead people make lousy conversationalists. Hey, I take offense to that statement. It's an interesting case about the man in the trance. So, Snelling got promoted to chief, did he? Yes, not too long after you left. Personally, I think he took advantage of your situation to change things around here. Was it really that much of a shock? Bill and I weren't exactly the most well-liked detectives on the force. But you were respected. You two solved over 350 cases in 15 years. You were an institution. Damn right we were. It's so easy for people to resent their more successful peers. Ah, Edwards. Nice to know someone missed us. You didn't examine Bill after he died, did you? Ha! <laughs> he wishes. No, there was nothing inconclusive about his death. 
He died from impact after falling from the roof of a building. Why, was there something else I should have looked into? No, I was just curious. As fond as I am of Edwards, it would have been a bit much for him to go poking around my insides. Thanks. That's all I needed to know for the moment. Any time, Fordham. Not without lunch first. Okay, well, let's check the workbench. Do a little bit of science. Uh, it's been ages since we got to do any type of chemical analysis. This will be grand! Dr. Edwards, could you remind me what it is I'm meant to be doing? Yes, of course. Go ahead and get as much of that oily residue from the cloth into the petri dish. Good. Now add some of the chemical reagent in the red bottle to the dish. Okay. Aha! The oil turned orange. Yes! The reagent has caused a chemical reaction and changed the oil's color. Isn't science fun? Quite. But how does this help me? I have some samples of the most common types of flammable oils on the shelf. Go ahead and add them to the test tubes. Good. Now simply check each one with the reagent to see if you can find a match. And if I don't find one? Then I suggest going out and looking for more oil samples. Alrighty. Whale oil. And... Well, oil be damned. Looks like that's not a match. <sighs> oh, you love it. Dad jokes aplenty from our ghostly friend. All right, good old kerosene. We're looking for orange. There's so much for kerosene being the culprit. No joke, Bill? You okay? Coal oil. Too bad, I would have bet on it being coal oil. Well, crap. We need one more oil sample. Looks like ammonium chloride. Won't be of much use to us in this experiment. Where would we go to find another oil sample, though? Hmm. I remember when Edwards used to... Or perhaps that... Well, guess we'll have to find out. Watch Snelling had been right behind the door. That would have been horrendous. Now where to? Brentwell Magazine. I'm trying to think of where we could find an oil sample. Usher and Price. Let's uh, head home. Honey, I'm home. You know, I've always wanted to say that. It's good to have you back. Trying to find anything that may have oil in it. Photograph. Let's have a chat with the wife. Addie? What is it, Miles? Was Desiree Lathan a client of yours by any chance? No, but plenty of the other grand dames used to gossip about her. What sort of things would they say? Usually they'd comment about how much she'd had to drink the night before. I got the impression she was quite the tippler. I hope you're not planning on following her example. That would require me to burn to death in our bed. Then I stand by my previous statement. And we're not going to compliment her again because we remember what happened. I'll let you get back to your book. Let's see, dressing table. Wardrobe, flowers, chair, painting. Alright, nothing here. Currently, at least. Time for me to get some things done. I wish you'd let me fix your hair before you go out like that. It'll be fine. No. Well, let's, uh... 
try Brentwell again. I don't think there's really anything. Oh, let's. I don't think there's really anything else worth asking him about right now. It's kind of like solitaire. We're kind of running out of options, which is good. Don't get me wrong. We haven't got anything else. Nothing else to ask. The money dispenser, the vault, the clock. Alrighty. Have Dr. Edwards, the coroner, examine Desiree's ashes, which he's going to do eventually. Well, it says investigate the supper club, so I guess we are going to have to do a little bit of uh, complimenting. Just wanted to hold it off as much as I could. Miss Robineau? Oh, it's... Yeah. No? Let's see. Your ha Oh, yeah. Your hair is quite lovely. I must compliment you on your lovely hairstyle. Oh, how sweet of you to say. Though it is getting a bit ragged. I'm having it done this afternoon, in fact. My girl, Adelaide, is a treasure. You don't say. Well, she must be talented to improve on near perfection. Oh, such a flattering tongue, Mr. Fordham. Can I just say you've got the most radiant smile I've ever seen? Oh, why, that's very sweet of you, Mr. Fordham. It's true. Not many women your age still have all their teeth intact. I beg your pardon? I didn't know you were such a master of the high kick, Miles. You got your foot in your mouth in record time. I, I, I just meant... You know what? Never mind. You've really got a great sense of fashion and style. All the other grand dames must be jealous. Oh, you. Thanks for your time. I'll let you get back to your drink. Thanks, sweetheart. Okay, what was the point in that, then? Hmm. Other than to potentially get me in trouble. However, maybe Adelaide knows something I'm about here. her. Welcome home. Addie? What is it, Miles? You've got an appointment with Charlotte Robineau later today, don't you? Are you using your detecting skills on me now? I spoke with her at the Gascon Supper Club, and she mentioned you. Turns out she knew Desiree Lathan. Makes sense. That social circle is tiny. She wasn't very forthcoming, though. Do you think you might try and persuade her to talk? Persuasion shouldn't be necessary. She usually just sits in the chair and starts gossiping up a storm. I think I know more about all the Gascon Grand Dames than anyone should. That's good. That's very good. Right. These are the things I want you to ask her about. So you want me to take off about an inch, but keep enough for your curls? Yes, that's right. You know how I like it, Adelaide. How was the Grand Dom's ball? Was your hairdo a hit? Oh, it was. All those other old biddies were practically fainting with jealousy. Truth be told, though, the evening was rather dull. Just the regular crowd of wags and gossips. You know, sometimes I envy people like you, Adelaide. People like me? Yes, you know. Ordinary people. Uh. Being a member of high society can be so draining. One quite lacks a sense of purpose, of ordinary honest usefulness that comes from a good day's labor. Have you done much of that sort of labor yourself, madam? What? No, of course not. But I imagine it must be quite good for the soul, quite grounding, just being what you are. No airs or pretense. Oh, you, you've missed a bit there on the left ear. Do be sure it comes out even. Certainly, madam. Urged the Sweeney Todd, rising. Has anyone special caught your eye recently? Uh-oh. <laughs> no, I think I'm getting too old for most of the young pups I see around these days. 
Besides, marriage has proved to be more trouble than it's worth. I'm finished with that whole game. Although there was one fellow who came into the supper club today. Pity he was only interested in asking questions. Uh-oh. Oh? Yes, the dark brooding type. Sleepless nights etched all over his face. Still handsome, though. I invited him to join me for a drink, but he refused. Turned out he was a private investigator, if you can believe it. Oh? What was he asking about? Uh-oh. Nothing of consequence. I didn't tell him very much anyway. Probably for the best he didn't join you for that drink then. Okay. I have to say, your musical selection for today is lovely. It's nice to know someone like you can appreciate some of the finer points of culture. In case you were wondering, the piece is the fourth symphony by a composer named Theophilus von Wagner. Yes, it's refreshing to hear the fourth symphony for change. Most people know von Wagner for his fifth symphony or his lute concerto in D minor. Oh, you, you know von Wagner? Although I admit he isn't one of my favorite Baroque composers, I can appreciate what he brought to the movement. Ooh. I'm more in favor of Scaravaldi. His development of the Concerto Grosso makes for much richer musical tapestry. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, well, perhaps so. Do you have any favorites among Scaravaldi's works? His first symphony is quite riveting. Do you mean his Concerto for Mandolin? He didn't have a first symphony as such. Well, well yes. That's what I meant. Uh, as much as I enjoy chatting, perhaps you should concentrate on what you're doing, dear. Broadening horizons, yeah. Adelaide with the backhand of culture. I was reading in the paper this morning about what happened with Desiree Lathan. Did you hear about that? Oh, such a tragedy. Poor Desi. We hadn't talked in a long time, but... How terrible to think of her dying in such a horrible way. My condolences. Thank you, dear. Did you and Desiree used to be friends? Oh, we were like sisters at one point. What happened? Uh, what else? A man got involved. You were both after the same man? No, no, quite the contrary. We both enjoyed being unattached and had vowed to keep it that way. The spinster sisters, we used to call ourselves. But I fell for a man a few years ago. We got married and Desiree stopped speaking to me. That's a shame. Yes, especially considering the marriage only lasted a few brief months. I lost both my husband and my best friend. I'm sure there's a lesson to be learned in that. I heard someone mention that Desiree had her portrait painted recently. Yes, I heard that too. I think it was Caroline who told me. Yes, that was it, Caroline. She was looking for a portrait artist and told me Desiree had found one. Roger DeVay, I think she said his name was. Okay. Roger DeVay? Sounds mysterious. Who is he? Well, I don't know about mysterious. He's just an artist. Not a very good one, either, from what I hear. He didn't do a good job on the portrait? Oh, no, no, he did fine. I just meant he hasn't really taken off. His paintings aren't worth very much, you see. But Desiree took a liking to him very quickly. Even went as far as giving him an extra key to her apartment. If there was anything more going on between them, I couldn't say. But she could have done a lot better, if you ask me. I mean, he's barely even an artist now. I heard he took a teaching position at the university. Now, who would want their likeness immortalized by a lecturer? Interesting. I see. Well, I hope he makes it in the world someday. Miracles may happen. Looks like we gotta go have a chat. And let's not talk about the weather. Good. I think that's all finished. Thank you, Adelaide. It was a pleasure, as always. Likewise, Miss Robineau. I'll see you next week. And she didn't tip very well, either. I'm sorry, dear. She sounds positively dreadful. 
no more than the other Gascon Grand Dames. I just hope you manage to get something useful from that. Very much so. All right, guys. Well, Adelaide's awesome. But we are going to go ahead and end the episode here, and I guess we'll go talk to the um, artist at the beginning of the next episode. Hope you all have enjoyed it. If you liked the episode, please leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. That'd be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.